The polls have closed in three more states at 7.30 in the east. At this point, Bill Clinton has 58 electoral votes. Bob Dole, nothing yet. CNN coverage of Election 96. Live from CNN Center, here are Judy Woodruff, Bernard Shaw, Bill Schneider, and Ken Bodie. And the biggest electoral prize at this half hour, we can tell you, is the state of Ohio. CNN calls that the state of Ohio has been won by President Clinton. This is a big victory, Ken Bodie, for the Democrats. That is true. No Republican has ever been elected without carrying Ohio. And it's also further bad news because for the last 30 years, this state has voted for the winning candidate. CNN declares that Bill Clinton has won West Virginia's five electoral votes. Not a big surprise that West Virginia is reliably Democratic. Every congressman, senator, the governor in both houses of the state legislature controlled by the Democrats. Polls have also just closed in the state of North Carolina, but at this hour, it is undecided among the three gentlemen you see there on the screen. Judy, this is fairly typical for North Carolina. This is a generally Republican state in presidential races, but George Bush won this state by less than 1% last time, his very closest state. These next two are going to surprise, if not shock you, first. In Indiana, CNN says that this one is too close to call. And in Kentucky, again, eight electoral votes in Kentucky, too close to call. And look at the percentage of reports. Here are three states where the polls closed half an hour ago. As yet, undecided. Georgia, the peach state. Virginia, the old dominion, still undecided. And South Carolina in the presidential contest, undecided. Now let's move over to the electoral map to show you what we have so far. President Clinton leading Bob Dole, 58 electoral votes. The magic number is 270. Well, Ohio is the story of this half hour. Ohio in this half hour, Florida before that, those are two big states and both in the Clinton column. And if you look at all the states that we have just said are too close to call, among all those states, the only one, I think if I wrote them down as fast as I could, the only one that a Democrat carried last time was Georgia. Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana were all Republican states. So yeah. what we have is the Republicans in a little bit of difficulty here. Mr. Dole in a little uh, Well, bit. Kentucky and Indiana is fascinating. That's Just right. Just fascinating. And, and, and the word was that if, if Dole started out in trouble in Kentucky and Indiana, if he lost them outright, he, the night would be over. We, we should still we should that say we that he has. Know. Yeah, we don't know. And he the, could very well win exactly. those two states. Exactly. That's yeah. what's fascinating. But Dole about said this. in June. He said if Bob Dole, this, he calls himself Bob Dole. Right. He says if Bob Dole doesn't win Kentucky, Bob Dole can't win the presidency. Well, we don't know yet, but it's a tight one. That's right. Let's take a look now at the <laughs> states that we know. Uh, one or the other has won, and here it is for President Clinton, Florida. You've been hearing this. New Hampshire, Ohio, Vermont, and West Virginia. And that adds up to the, what is it, 58? We just counted a yes. few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill Schneider, you want to take over with your exit polls here, and, and I'll save a thought I had. <laughs> okay. Go We're going to take a look at the state of Ohio, a big win for Bill Clinton, and see how did he do it. Well, one-third of the voters in Ohio were union members in the household, and they clearly went a majority, a solid majority for Bill Clinton. That big AFL-CIO push for the Democrats and for the Democratic president paid off in Ohio. Now, let's look at the voters who decided how they were going to vote just in the last three days. How did they end up voting? Well, they voted for Bob Dole. It looks like Bo Dole talked about his momentum in the last few days. It was there. Those late deciders decided for him. But they were only 9% of the voters in Ohio. What about the voters who decided before October, who knew exactly how they were going to vote all along? They were the ones who delivered for Bill Clinton, and that was 70% of the voters in Ohio. So while Dole picked up some late momentum, it couldn't compete with the tremendous number of voters, 70%, who knew how they were going to vote before the month even started out. You are very good with that, John Madden. Ought to be jealous tonight. <laughs> well, checking the watch, it's time for Crossfire. Here they come. Live from Washington, Crossfire. On the left, Geraldine Ferraro. On the right, Robert Novak. In the crossfire, Republican Senator John McCain of Arizona, advisor to the Dole Kemp campaign. 
And in New Orleans, Democratic Senator John Rowe. Good evening. Welcome to Crossfire. Finally, Election Day came with Bill Clinton casting his vote in the renovated train station in Little Rock, Arkansas, and Bob Dole voting at the First Christian Church in Russell, Kansas. The other millions of Americans voting today decided 35 Senate contests and 435 House races, as well as the presidency. President Clinton is heavily favored for a second term, and the big question is, who controls Congress with the Republicans narrowly favored? Jerry? Senator, let's pick up on a little bit on those numbers that mm -hmm. Bill Snyder was talking about. We've had Ohio that has gone for Clinton. We have Kentucky, which Dole said was a, a must-win mm -hmm. so, state too close mm -hmm. to call. You mm -hmm. see that, that um, um, Florida has gone to uh, President Clinton. If, if Dole is in trouble in the South, do you see any scenario by which he could win this presidency tonight? Well, Jerry, as, as I mentioned before we went on, I just came off of the 96-hour uh, trip uh, with Senator Dole. We saw enthusiasm every place we went. I think that California is still in play. I think that um, there's a lot of southern states that uh, went for uh, President Clinton last time, and I certainly think that uh, even though they may be, uh, quote, undecided, I still believe Kentucky and Indiana, for example, will go for uh, Senator Dole, but I, I, I don't uh, uh, discount the importance of Florida and Ohio. They're important states. So that, so that with all things being equal, if, if this trend continues, Senator Dole will stay in Washington or go back to Kansas but not be president of the United States? <laughs> well, uh, you know, we've just got a few states, and I'd like to, to see what happens in some of the other bigger Midwestern states and also uh, in the Southwest as well as if the you South. Take a, if you take a look at the, the Senate races in a lot of the states, too, New Hampshire has gone to a Democrat. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other states where it's just too close to call, and, and it's, there are only a limited number of, of seats that Democrats need to take it over. What is your feeling on this? You've been looking at the numbers all along. My feeling is that we pick up like one seat. I'm sure that John Bro may have a different uh, view, but um, uh, I think we pick up the four southern open Democrat seats and uh, the other ones really just are, are too close to call, like Oregon and Colorado and um, Maine is a very close race. Georgia, so, too. Georgia, yeah. So, and Arkansas is close. So <coughs> I, I think that uh, it's, we may be up very late tonight. Senator John Bro, uh, this is uh, very good news for President Clinton, but uh, I wonder if you're popping champagne corks yet because all the early indications are that uh, you're not going to control the Congress, you're not going to control the Senate or the House. So this is a kind of a, of a Weltschmerz. You know what Weltschmerz means. It's uh, uh, a little bit of, uh, of uh, sorrow and a little bit of happiness, isn't it? Bob, you must be struggling. This is devastating news for Senator Dole in a sense when you don't not carry Ohio, uh, which every Republican president has always carried, and you lose Florida. That's very bad news for Senator Dole as far as winning an electoral victory. And we're not finished voting here in Louisiana. We got about an hour and a half left, and I'm very confident that Mary Landrieu will be victorious. I think I would agree with uh, John McCain, my friend, that the Senate is going to be very close. I would not be surprised if it was 51-49 either way. Well, can you, can you explain to me how, uh, and by the way, of course, the winning Ohio and, and Florida does not come under the category of huge surprises. Everybody thought that, that the president was going to win those states. But I, I, I just would like you to address my, my initial question, Senator, on, on how you can square the uh, apparent big victory of President Clinton with the uh, with a with a, a uphill struggle I think you have to win the House and Senate and let me just uh, give a suggestion of what's wrong you're dying in the South isn't that right Oh, no, we're not at all. I think that we're going to do well in Georgia. I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win in, in Louisiana. We're going to win in Arkansas. But I think the basic answer to the question, Bob, is very simple, and that is that people vote for their senator because of what he says or she says in their respective states. It's not that connected to the presidential election. I think you can have people voting for President Clinton and perhaps voting for a Republican senator. But we feel very comfortable in the South. We've got good, moderate candidates despite an onslaught of this liberal, liberal, liberal charge for people who are very moderate to middle-of-the-road candidates that we have. Well, aren't, isn't it true that uh, the problem is that some of your candidates in the South, like Mary Landrieu in Louisiana and Max Cleland in Georgia, uh, were election-year moderates? They've been liberals all their life, and perhaps the voters saw through them? 
Bob, it's really interesting. Are they charging Mary Landrieu with being a liberal? Here's a person who supports the death penalty, supports carrying concealed weapons in Louisiana, and also will support a constitutional amendment to balance the budget. That doesn't sound very liberal to me, she's also, but that's what she's been charged with. She also opposed the, uh, the, the bill to ban uh, uh, the late-term abortions. The Absolutely not. Abort I mean, abortions. Bob, there you go again, falling for some of the Republican rhetoric. She clearly has said that she would have voted just like me and Bennett Johnson on that issue, but her opponent and others keep saying, well, that's not her position. That's what she said very clearly. Well, we're going to break right now. We're going to come back and discuss whether or not there is going to be a majority in the House and that's a Democratic majority, a Republican majority, right after this break. Crossfire is brought to you by LCI International, a very different long-distance phone company. And by Chrysler and the cab forward sedan of Chrysler. What's new in your world? Welcome back to Crossfire. We're talking about election 96 with Senator John McCain, Republican of Arizona and a Dole advisor. And in New Orleans, Senator John Bro, Democrat of Louisiana. Senator, let me just pursue this whole mm -hmm. thing about a, de a Republican majority mm -hmm. in the Senate just a little bit further because I, a lot of us are worried about what will happen once that Democratic major Republican majority comes in. Mm -hmm. If the Republican majority comes in, are you guys going to go after the Clinton administration again for another four years? Or are you going to you're going to get down to some serious work in the Senate for a change? Um, Jerry, could I mention what real quick before I answer? And that is that sure. we are pleased to see the closure in the popular vote. Uh, as you know, many of the polls like ABC had President Clinton by 16 in the teens, and it looks like uh, that that that's significant closure, which could affect some of these other states. But. Uh, look, I, Jerry, you would agree with me that what has been happening when this foreign money is really incredible. And it isn't being reported by the Republicans. It's every major newspaper in America. There clearly has to be an investigation of that. Da, no now, if that's, called, if that's called going after the well, president, then, then yeah, we'll be going after it if we have the majority. But I think that, uh, I mean, I, I've been around politics for a long time. The three of us have. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen. Well, we just saw on the front page of the New York Times today, Mr. Riotti had, what, 12 uh, visits? Except uh, that there are I mean, ways, Senator, to, uh, go yeah. up, to go at one of these things, to do an investigation which lasts a month or two months or whatever yes. is necessary to get the work done or to have one that goes on for years like what this whole need. Whitewater situation has gone on for years with Senator D'Amato. Can yes. we expect that to come up again? Well, w what I hope is that we have a Howard Baker on the Democrat side as they did during Watergate. Uh, a bipartisan Democrat will say, look, we've got to look into this and we've got to go at it in a bipartisan well, you had that. face. You had that in Whitewater. Faces. I hope so. All right, I'll, I'll take you up on that. Uh, John Burrow, are you ready to play the role of Howard Baker and ask Bill Clinton, what did he know and when did he know it about this uh, laundered money from Indonesia? Bob, the problem is bipartisan. It's a bipartisan problem. Just yesterday, uh, one person who was a supporter and worked for the Dole campaign confessed to making a $120,000 illegal contribution. Now, I think the American people want us to, to look at some new campaign finance reform. John McCain, I think, is a leader on this issue, uh, with, along with our Democratic side. That's what I think the people want. They want to make sure we do it right in the future and not spend a great deal of time uh, just harping on what has happened in the past, because it's been both sides and both sides have to clean up our act. Well, well, John, as a realistic Louisiana politician, and you're <laughs> one of the best of them, uh, you, would you agree with me that a lot is at stake tonight for the president on who controls the congressional machinery of, of the House and the Senate as to what kind of investigation there's going to be? 